Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Doc Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Circa Prudor Remastered. Today it's going to be Light and Royal from a 2022 match RJB dug up for me. This is right around the time that Royal won his ASL championship, so he's at the top of his game. Top right it's going to be Royal, bottom right it's going to be Light. Oh ho ho ho, should be an excellent one. It's always excellent when RJB recommends them, isn't it? Check him out, youtube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. Just leave a comment on one of his videos saying thank you so much for screening so many Brood War replays and sending them to Falcon so we can be entertained by the replays that you find. Okay, maybe you don't have to say that exactly. <laughs> but, you know, in your own words. Anyway, it's going to be a TBT. JLC is happy right now. He does really, really enjoy the TBT matchup. Will there be battle cruisers? I don't know. I don't know, JLC. But maybe there will be. So we're going to see a tank line. We're going to see a lot of drops. I feel like the drop version of TVT is a lot more fun to watch than the tank line. But I feel like I'm in the majority, so... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So, yeah, what's going on in the world today? I don't know. Kids are back in school. It's a bajillion degrees outside. Looking forward to the football season coming up. Uh, let's see. By the time you're watching this, I'm actually probably watching a uh, last fall scrimmage before the season starts next week for my college football team. So that's super fun. Getting hyped for it. I'm a ball sports dude. I'm an esports dude. I like competitive video gaming as much as I like competitive on field, on ice, on the rink, on the court playing too. Okay, I'm not as much of a hockey fan, but I love basketball and football. And I'll watch baseball during the playoffs and, I don't know, just other times, right? Right, right, right. Okay, well, what is the play here today? Um, nothing. Both players going for barracks, nobody going for proxy, which is actually kind of popular in TBT. Enough players are not interested in playing late game TBT that they'll just proxy a TBT every time they come across one. But Light and Royal, I think, respect each other way, way too much to do that. Oh, is this a <gasps> one base opening here from Royal Light? Going a little bit greedier with the Rax Command Center opening here. Uh... And Steve the SCV coming down for the scout. Steve the SCV shirts are available. Woo! At Falcon Paladin dot store. Look at him harassing this poor SCV, trying to build a command center. Another guy has to come off the line to save him. Steve versus Steve action here. And by save him, I mean just take his place. And then allow his buddy Steve to fight against the Steve that showed up. It's a kind of, there's an identity crisis going on here. So now what do you do with the factory, right? You want to make vultures and swing them down and try to take it down this way. Bunker, smart idea. Bunker will deal with vultures. Maybe not as much on the run by. Do you want to make a siege tank? Okay, well, definitely machine shops on the way. So probably siege tank would be my guess. Yeah, two marines in a bunker is going to be enough to deal with a good number of marines that could show up and also vultures on some level. Mm, is he going to make any more marines here? Or does he just want to save his resources for the mechy mech units? That is always a question you must ask yourselves. All right, machine chop done. What are we doing? What is this, Royal? What's the play? Oh, SCV died. That sounds like it was a light SCV. Okay, you got a machine shop. Uh, and then you made a vulture and didn't do... Okay. I mean, you didn't have to... Ha uh, mm. Weird. Weird choices here from Royal right now. What are you doing? And another vulture's on the way. And another factory coming in. Hmm. This barracks positioning is so the vultures can't make a run by up this ramp as easily. I'm not sure they could even fit through this gap. Are they too fat for that? They're pretty thin units, but... Little bit chonkier than they look sometimes. Ah, alright. Spider mines. On the opening. Intriguing. Uh, hmm. A spider mine opening in a TVT. I'm curious about this. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, barracks floating down from Royal. He's done with that barracks, except that he needs it to build any more factories. So if it died, it'd be pretty bad. But he doesn't need it on the ground to produce marines for him anymore because uh, that's not what he's doing. 
Right? You can definitely show up with a bunch of Marines and a TBT and wipe them out as they're trying to get their mech off the ground, but if your opponent scouts it, they're going to bunker up, right? They're going to prepare for it, and you're just going to die. And at this level, these players are going to scout it. That's the thing. SCV scouting is really effective, especially in this matchup. Hey, a Wraith on the way from Light. Is he worried? Oh. Is this the start of a Wraith ball is the question. Does he see? He does not see. There's a Supply Depot over there. Oh, wait. Did he? I don't know if he got down and saw that Starport. That'd be cool if he did. Oh, he sees this one, though. All right. Oh, and it's Cloak. Two-port Wraith opening. Well, sort of. He's got an expansion, too. But, yeah, two-port Wraith. On the way in a TVT, which is really effective. It's not scouted because you're making vultures and siege tanks in this matchup. And guess what? None of that can shoot up. Sucker. Let's see. Engineering bay, maybe? Getting a turret up would be cool. Yeah, look at this. Remember when I said keeping this barracks alive would be nice? It would be nice, but it's impossible. Well, Royal says, I made spider mines. Might as well use them. We're going to spider mine up a bunch of places here. Marine versus Wraith. Who will win? Wraith. Wraith win. Ground damage embarrassing, but not so embarrassing. You can't kill a single Marine with a single Wraith, especially if you micro well. Beautiful micro. Siege mode on the way from Light. Siege tanks on the way from Royal. But getting a Vulture speed instead of that Siege mode upgrade. Ah, uh, Goliath, come save the day. You have any scans available, Royal? Because this guy's going cloak. Or he should. Or he doesn't need to. Never mind. He can just... Nicely done. Good way to get out of that situation, sir. I'm impressed. Like I said, light siege mode is on the way. Siege mode just now is getting started from Royal. Ah, there's the cloak. Killing the one anti-air. Nice. Yeah. Four wraiths going to town on your barracks. What you gonna do about it, son? Nothing. And the SCV who's trying to repair it dies too. Beautiful. What a great opening from Light here. This is so cool. Cloaked Wraith opening. Caron boost on the way. Finally making an engineering bay. Did he? I don't think Royal expected Cloak. And, in fact, he did not. Do you have a scan available? Let's find out. No scan there. And now just barely a scan there. Finally going for spider mines and speed upgrades for his vultures is light, and he's just kind of settling down into more of a traditional TBT setup here. He's not going five port wraith ball just to start this off and just try to get out of this whole traditional mech thing. It was, you know, it was an attempt to get out there and kill some stuff while invisible, and that window not quite over, right? Because the wraiths are being repaired. Light is preparing to use them for later things. Spider mine almost killed you, friend. Be careful, Marine. Yeah, Caron boosts Goliaths do terrible damage against Wraiths from forever away, too. Wraith ground attack range is like two. So their ability to defend themselves against Goliaths for hitting them from eight miles away, not great. Kind of like Muta's that way. A lot like Muta's that way. Ah, the drop, the drop tech from light. There's a spider mine here, which is a genius scouting measure. From Royal, he sees everything that's all... And by that I mean... He does not see everything that's going on up here. But if you get close enough to be seen in the radius... He saw the Wraiths come through earlier, anyway. Third base? Wraith Ball says, how about no third base? I'm gonna kill your SCV. 107, 111 army supply. But a lot of that is tied up in Wraiths. And I don't know how much in a direct engagement... They're going to be all that useful if it comes down to Light versus Royal on the ground, you know? Oh! Wait, what? 
Where? Is that that siege tank firing on his own stuff? Hmm, maybe that was splash damage. Ooh. Royal has an idea of where these wraiths are hiding. Look at him stutter stepping already. Oh gosh, wraiths, no. Wraiths, no. Okay, well the wraiths are gone. Good thing we invested a bunch of money into their cloak, but whatever. Let's continue making tanks and vultures. Get another control tower up for dropships and whatnot, because yeah, tank lines, hard to break, it turns out. Even if you're Terran, especially if you are Terran, it's hard to break a tank line. So what we do instead is we drop. One thirty-five to one nineteen supply. Royals up. He's got this third base, third base rolling. Whereas Light's third base is coming up later, a lot later, actually down here to the south. About sixty percent complete on that thing. Going to be a minute before it turns into a big deal. Now the question is: Are these multiple starports going to be used for battle cruisers in the future? I don't know. Does he have three starports? Why did he just make a control tower? He already had one. Because he made the drop ship. I'm not sure what happened there. A little bit lost. That's okay. Terran music is filling our ears with its sweet, sweet melody. Oh, and a fourth base from Light coming up to try to compensate for the late third. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Royal says, it's go time? And he says, just kidding, it's not go time. My tanks will kill your tanks, but that's about it. No, no real attempt to break this. Just kind of positioning, posturing. Vultures always being active, that's what they need to do. Barracks trying to provide spotting distance here between these two tanks, but sort of failing at that miserably, because the Goliath count is so high from Royal for dealing with the early race that it's a bit of a problem for Light now, so it kind of came back to bite him, his choices. He's double expanding up along the top side now, too. Triple, I apologize. It is a triple expand from Royal. That's what we're here for. Triple expanding like an absolute madman. Tanks. Spider mines. God, good connection. Two tanks down there. Royal trying to hold against this superior tank numbers coming up. This left side of Vultures. Thinking about swinging in there. Maybe getting in spider mining these guys. But mm, we'll wait for the tanks to set up and stop that advance. Not a big deal. Wow, I cannot believe Light's triple expanding. That's so cool. Are you going to get away with it? We do not see a triple expand very much in StarCraft. Saw Bisu do it, I think, earlier this week against Fantasy. That was gutsy. Uh, check that game out, by the way, if you really enjoy... Well, I mean, good macro. It's Bisu and it's Fantasy. Why do I have to tell you to watch that game? Go watch it. It's amazing. I believe the comments were the best TBP I've ever seen, somebody said. Bottom left base coming up here from Light. Yeah, I mean, this is as traditional a TVT can be. Tank lines, expanding, taking half the map. Your opponent can't really do anything about it, so they take half of their map, you know. Uh, I was really hoping drops would be a bigger part of this game. Uh, there are dropships, I don't know, maybe there was a dropship from Light that tried to sneak up in here and then missile turrets killed it and he was like, all right, enough for drops. Don't much care anymore about those. And Royal busting in. And a standstill. Again, light. Trying to expand up this left side. Okay, that'll give him an economic advantage. 
Ah, see, drop up the left side here, shut down. Good attempt, good idea, but turrets, spider mines, vultures, ready for it. That's where our, that's where our uh, dropship was. Oh, Royal doing his own dropship shenanigans, good. I mean, not committing a ton to this by any stretch, but you know, one dropship with a siege tank and a couple vultures can really keep your enemy on their toes. Look at him unloading, reloading, He's like, ah ha ha. You can't touch me. I'm a dropship. Ooh, swing down the right side. Royal jumping on top of these siege tanks, but then like five more siege tanks show up from the south. And so this is going to be a held position, but, you know, three or four tanks died from light. Not exactly ideal. Plus, Knight has the high ground at this spot, so Royal doesn't really want to sit here forever. He just, I mean, he should probably back it out. Not doing that. Okay, more dropships on the way from light. He says these tank lines, they are... Abysmal. I hate them. 78 to 76 workers. Both players feeling pretty good about themselves. This base hasn't really tried to come up here from light yet, but man, does he have a lot of other bases going. Same thing with Royal. Just happily, happily mining. Now what I'm curious to see is, how are we going to do this? Is somebody going to break this with a big doom drop with drop ships? Is somebody going to go battle cruisers? Maybe move into a five port wraith play? Or, or it is going to see tank lines actually get broken to the point that one player can steamroll over the other one. That happens sometimes in TVTs. I feel like not as much anymore. Something I see more in the older TVTs that I've cast, but uh, this is more of a new one. 2022. Ooh, here we go. It's not a doom drop, but it is four drop ships with vultures in them. And by that, I mean there's two tanks in here, too. And, nope, so the vultures are just like, no, how about you not unload here? Okay, fine, you can unload here, siege tank, siege up. I don't even know, like, what are you, what's the plan exactly? Oh, uh, Light's plan was that the siege tanks would wipe out the responding vultures, and then he'd get some free SCV kills. Hey, that went pretty well. SC Ooh, that's about 10 SCVs down from Royal, 81 to 73 now, in favor of Light. These siege tanks get wiped out, and then the vultures die after, you know, doing all right. Three kills on a vulture. I think they're all SCVs. That's never a bad thing. He's going to come back in for round two, Pot. That's what it looks like. The thing is, he hasn't dealt with these missile turrets all that well. Can we? This turret did die. Oh, and that one just exploded, too. So this is a good... Un mm. Low ground siege tank, a little bit annoying. So Light's going to deal with that first. Ah, Vulture's responding again, but Siege Tanks are here. Also some Goliaths. Oh, that Spider-Mine just wiped out five units. Friend or foe, hard to say. Light says, I will drop myself onto your drop and kill it. That's not how Light talks. But that's what he did. That was cool. That was super rad. Okay, well, some SCV deaths on a royal side of the map, but he's now at 80 SCVs to 72 for lights. So <laughs> he's doing fine. He can replace SCV losses pretty capably. Right side base still hasn't been taken yet. I think that's key. If Royal can take this base or prevent Light from getting this left side base, I think Royal can win this game. But the status quo is that Light has an extra base of income that Royal doesn't. And unless Royal can make some insanely good trades consistently throughout this game, it's going to be Light's game to lose based on the simple economics of StarCraft. You know, university course levels of StarCraft, which do exist, or perhaps did exist. Uh, it's really just kind of a couple days maybe they spend talking about the economics of StarCraft because there's not a ton there. It's like, how many bases do you have available? How much income are you getting from those bases? You have more, you will probably win. Drop left side. Oh, this is real. This is doomy. This is Doom Droppy. Get those missile turrets. The next drops are easier. Kill the fleeing SCVs. They don't deserve to live. Royal says, all right, fine. Let's counterattack. Fly past the enemy dropships and drop directly into this bottom left corner, hopefully taking out two bases for the price of one or unloading right on Spider Mines. 
No! The unloading on spider mines. Oh, it didn't do as much as I thought it. Oh, wow. Okay. It did something. Oh, and then the siege tanks responding here from light to shutting that down. All right. That went a lot better than I thought it would from Royal. Still not great. Goliath, I, are you really trying to kill? Yes, trying to kill a missile turret. Hooray! So it is the drops style of TVT. That's what we like to see here. Oh, Royal sent up some units trying to clear out the top left side. No. Nope, that's not happening. Uh, so it lights up. 191 to 142 supply. This is absolutely terrible from Royal. Not only did he not kill this left side base and take the right side base, he lost a base. And it still hasn't set up on this right side yet. Why isn't he building a command center here? You have enough money for it. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Royal traditional ground assault left side against Light's 9 o'clock base. Sieging up on the ramp. And then, ah, oh, these guys did get spotted. I think he was hoping he could sneak on in here. But Royal sees the dropships coming in. Uh, he's gonna, oh, man, this is... Forcing a liftoff on the 9 o'clock position is good. Royal finally decides to build a command center there on the bottom right. Or 3 o'clock position. Not really a bottom right scenario. Light gonna shut that thing down, or at least try to do so. He's got 3-2 upgrades on his mech versus the 3-2 upgrades of Royals. So both players pretty good. Air weapons on the way from Light. Might five poor rate this thing to try to close it out. Yeah, this, I mean, that nine o'clock or three o'clock base dying rather. Bad news from Royal, but here comes the cavalry. And by that, I mean their inside dropships are going to drop right on your tanks and wipe them out and hold this position forever now. Possibly forever. So denying all mining at the nine o'clock base from light is good by Royal. Potentially taking the three o'clock again. Yeah, he's really bringing a lot of his army over here. He knows how important this 3 o'clock base is for him. Light says, yeah, you know what? Let's maybe not try to engage into where the entire army is. I guess these bases exist too. And it could come down to these bases. I cast an insane game. Featuring, who was that? Uh, it was Jadong. I think it was Rain? on polypoid and it did come down to one of these minerals only bases so it can they can be really important this light's trying to convince royal to maybe not hard turtle on this three o'clock base so it's more easier more easy to assault later more easier is not english falcon but denying this base and denying this base Yes, it'll just the bank the bank situation here a oh, bit of a desperation drop here from Royal inside the main base of light Is there enough Terran here to take down the Terran? <laughs> Supply Depot is pretty good target supply blocking light would be really good for the next few minutes of this match for sure Siege tanks responding light not panicking Dragoons sort of running in there to die. Oh this guy's running in here to die. Oh, wow, this drop is actually, dude, Royal. Has Royal just clawed his way back into this game with this drop? One of the best drops I've ever seen from a Terran player. This is great. He's not supply blocking light, but he's hurting him. He's killing supply depots. He's got a high ground position against the defending low ground position units. For light, that's never great. Dude, this drop is still doing stuff. I mm -hmm. Light is trying to shut down this three o'clock base from Royal, but I think his I don't think his tanks are close enough to hit it. This is a disaster for Light all of a sudden. He's been denying two bases of income for a long time. But the supply block potential here, the tech destruction potential here by this drop from Royal is insanely good. Light hasn't really been able to clean this out, nor do any kind of a counterattack to deal with it either. What is happening? Light still has the better, uh, the better bank, which is fine. I'm not going to complain about having a better bank, but his main base is going to be nothing but rubble here soon. Royal should move these tanks up and really start going. I guess there are two tanks down here kind of trying to defend this southern half of the map or the base, but... 
I don't see it happening. Yeah, factory. Just produced a tank, but it's dead now. Yeah, factory down, one factory remaining. He's building more factories in his bottom left. This is very TVP. Where, <laughs> where Light's the Protoss player, he loses his main base, has to rebuild, rebuild all of his stuff in another base. Royal somehow holding on to this, even though there are, I guess, these siege tanks are covering it. These tanks could come over here, though, really cause problems for it th at the moment. Command center burning down. Will it be saved? Light dropping on this incursion. Does it work? Does Royal not want to drop in here? No, he doesn't. So yes, Light does remove Royal from off the premises. <gasps> it's 170 to 130 supply in favor of Light. Another drop here from Light Up North gets cleaned out by Royal Defense Forces and his own drop ships. Okay, good pickup there. But I mean this is this is absolutely demolishing Royal. These two bases not existing for him, while Light casually hanging on to his corners. Casually taking his minerals only expansion now. Royal no, nope, building a new CC just to take his high ground minerals base outside of his main again after it died. Amazing. Ah, Royal trying to set up a huge attack into this high ground position that Light just took. Dropping his own tanks, Light in defense, moving tanks into position on the left side. The positioning here is so important. Okay, so high ground belongs to light again, and that means that he's going to be just fine. Thank you. Yeah, 174 to 135 supply. This is looking a little bit like Royal is out of steam. Royal, okay, swing some vultures down the right side. Going to kill some SCVs, which is nice. Okay, kind of running into siege tanks, not exactly what you want. I uh, Maybe focusing the command center, not exactly ideal either. Get the SCVs. Ah, but siege tanks from Royal show up. Okay, so this base is going to die. Plus, it's another great high ground position. This game is crazy good. I don't think we're going to see battle cruisers. It really seems like the light is just about to choke the life out of Royal here. I love leaving one siege tank behind while the rest of them go off to do something else. That is such a Terran thing to do. It's because the, the damage of a siege tank is unlike anything else, man. You can't just leave a single lurker behind and shut down a base like that. Can't leave a single, I don't know, a reaver behind and just be like, la la la. Well, maybe you could if you're Protoss. Yep, see the siege tank and this dropship spotting. This space has been denied. Is Royal finally gonna break this top left corner? The stranglehold that Light has had on him. No, he's not at all. Yeah, and every time he lands this command center, it gets shelled. He's bringing SCVs. He should not be bringing SCVs over here. This is not what you want to do. Another attempted attack onto this high ground position on the south for Light, but nope. Royal GG's out and Light. Gets the win in 28 minutes. Yeah, it all came down to this top left corner, didn't it? These two bases were denied. They were killed. They were kept from Royal. Light knew he didn't really need to take them for himself necessarily, as long as he had all these mining bases in the bottom left and the 6 o'clock and the 9 o'clock over here too. He had this base for a while. He could afford to lose this because he's still a couple of bases, two or three bases up on Royal, and denying this base was huge as well. Yeah. So, incredible drop there from Royal. Did wipe out a ton of the tech structures and supply depots for Light in, the, in his main, but, you know, just kind of rebuilt in the bottom left. Everything's fine. Kept it rolling. Stayed maxed out. Dealt with the desperation attacks of Royal onto this base. Kind of let this one go because there were fewer minerals here. This was the priority to defend, and he defended it well. And then the siege tank behind a wall, firing over the wall. Thanks to the help of the drop ship. That was it. So, fan... Fantastic TVT. Really fun stuff there from Royal and from Light.
238,000 points to 263,000 points in favor of Light. Makes sense. Both players producing very similar numbers of units. Royal actually outproducing Light, surprisingly enough. But Light outkilling Royal by about 40 or 50. Wait, hold on. Do some math, Falcon. 60? Almost 70 units. Yo, structures raised. 44 in favor of Royal. 31 in favor of Light. And then outspending Royal by, woo, 7,000 resources. A little less than 7,000, but still, 7,000 resources in 28 minutes in a TVT, right? In a mirror matchup. That's killer. Absolutely destructive. All right. That was awesome. That was some really, really, really good play from Light. Taking down the, you know, presumptive ASL champion at this time in 2002. So killer, killer, killer impressive play over there from our a purple a Terran. Love this guy. He's always fun to cast. Always solid. Always difficult. Always scary. And that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw, what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter. Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.